Hey guys, before we start the show, I want to let you know that we set up a Patreon to give you more ways to support what we do here at Ballin' and VA. There are different tiers available and anything that you can contribute goes a long way. Thank you for your support and enjoy the show. All right, welcome to another episode of Ballin' and VA. Man, I got them back again, y'all. You know, one of the truest, most genuine, hard-working, fiercest competitors that came out of Petersburg High. And and for me, as I got to know him over this year, he's been much more of a better friend, man. Because I could talk to this brother, man. I call him, he pick up, man, and just talking to him on the side, and we don't even talk much. But he's so genuine. And this brother supported me when I was on Zoom when I first started balling the VA, man, when I ain't have much of anything. And he was like, no, nah, no doubt, man. I help you wherever you need to be. And I had, since I got a bigger platform, I had to bring him back, man. Play ball. He's a, what, seven, eight-year pro now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep, overseas pro. Like I said, again, played at, you know, Petersburg High. Like I said, one of the best ballers they ever came out of the 804. Yes, I'm putting him up there. We know the 2000s. But the way this man competes, man, he give you every cent. So if you pay ten dollars, you are gonna get ten dollars worth. Twenty dollars, he gonna give you everything. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce y'all back again for part two. My man, and he gonna be talking about his max development. Duvon Duvy Maxwell. Yes, sir. Yes, thank sir. you for coming on, man. Thank you for having me, man. It's always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. Man, thank you, man. Like I said, I always gotta show love. You most genuine dude, man. You what you see is what you get with you, man. I appreciate man. that. I appreciate that. Likewise, man. I read off energy a lot, man. So I appreciate you a lot. Yeah, thank man. You. Like I told you, I appreciate you, man. I told you, like, I ain't never thought I'd be sitting here talking to you, man. Now we're on a bigger platform and you decide to come back when I reached out to you, man. And and I and I thank you for this, man, because it means a lot. It says about our friendship, like I said, yep. even though we haven't been friends that long, but I felt like I've known you forever since I've watched you play since she was in high school. Yep, yep. Yep. So yeah, man. So what you doing now, man? Let's just talk about we got you. Like I said, you came out with your shirts, that the dry fit shirts, max development. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that, man, because we we gonna before we go on to talk about, you know, playing over overseas and everything yeah i'm in a new uh area of life it's new to me okay you know? uh being a vet just a true vet like i always been a young wild guy you know ambitious to make it to a certain place and i think i just woke up one day literally like i can't explain the other way i woke up one day and it's like now nah, i'm him like now it's my turn to be who the older guys were to me you know what i'm saying i've been across my path um many the name is just like now it's my turn so now with this it really was like my wife idea, to be 100% okay. honest with you. I finally let my wife and my kids into one of my workouts for the first really? time. For the first time, I never let it happen because it's like I'm a different person when I go home. Like my shield is off, my guard is off. Like I'm just dad, you know, I'm just husband at home. But this time I had to, um, it was time management thing. It was a mistake actually. So it was like, a, uh, y'all just come with me. Uh, I'm trying to spend time and time limited right now. Just come with me to the workout. And my wife was, she uh, went to sleep that night. Uh, she went to sleep that night. And in the middle of the night, she was like, uh, I got it. I got it. I got an idea. Uh-oh. Max development. And I'm like, I bust that last time, man. Go back to sleep, man. <laughs> and she was like, no, no, I'm so serious. Like, the way you was passionate in the workout, and I never seen you like this. I didn't know. Like, that's what it was. Like, mm-hmm. this is what you need to do. And I'm like, hmm, you ain't steer me wrong yet in six years so. Why not go for the swing? Right. And I was scared because it's like, a, it's not what I want to do, but when you trust people, you know, cl- people close to you, especially when you say you want to marry somebody. Right. You trust somebody, it's like, okay, I'll try it. I tried it, and it's like, I wake up today. Like, today I'm actually like one month and four days in, and I got 20 clients, and I'm like, See? Damn, I never thought it would be like this, but I'm happy because of the purpose and the, behind it, you know? Man, shout out to your wife Raven, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Man, shout out because y'all just got recently married over the summer, right? Mm-hmm, yes, sir. Man, how, so far, how's how's marriage life, man? Uh, honestly, don't nothing change. Right, right. So whoever you marry before you marry him, it's gonna be the same thing. You know, mm-hmm. it's just this thing that y'all have now that locks y'all in, right? You know? And it's and it is to be respected, but. If you don't have nothing before marriage, don't look for nothing coming out the marriage. You right. know what I'm saying? So whatever you have coming into marriage is what you're going to get out of it, you know? So. That's right. 
And like I said, man, you know, shout out to her, man, because oh. again, you know, it's always the people that's behind the scenes that people don't know about. And it's this case, yep. your wife. Yep. Yep. And, you know, just because she has your well being and your best interest. Mm -hmm. And you've always, you know, me and you be on the Facebook post, you always talk about family. Mm, you time. always big on family and kids and stuff like this. And, and this ain't no act, you know, it's just that we sit up here talking. This mm -hmm. man is about it. He's so young. And I just like, man, and I just see that he just cares. Even though everything that you did, mm -hmm. you just carried that way, man. Mm -hmm. And that's why that's why I always was just anything you did. I always just just man. I, I hope you make it. I appreciate that because I appreciate you. I, I just see it, man. You just had that passion. The same things that I carry, but I I won't out there playing ball like like you was doing, man. But yeah. I just feel it. Yeah. So I'm just glad that everything is starting to come full circle, man. So I appreciate that. Um, how many days? Well, what do you actually do your development at? What like places? Like is it like a particular center? The crazy thing is. Um, that's a job move, itself trying to find places. I'm willing to come to clients right now. Okay. So I'm bouncing around a lot and I keep it like just like I do workouts. Like mm -hmm. I've been through a lot of my in my eight years professional. I'm blessed to be playing that long, you know, and a lot of my vets that older than me that that put me on game, they gave me the opportunity of just just slow down. Realize that I know you're so ambitious and you being doovy, you wanna be here, but eight years is a long time. Yeah, man. It's a long time. So after listening to them, it's just like I kind of get that same thing to my clients. Like, I got a four-year-old that works out at 6 a.m. Are you serious? I got a four-year-old that works out at 6 a.m. So when I wake up at 6 a.m. and get that workout in with him, I'm going sometimes. I make I cross the, the door at 8.30. Wow. And I might get my hugs and kisses with the family in, in between time, but I'm locked in because I'm in search of the next me, the next dot, the next Crisco, the next, the next Frank. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily saying that that's what I'm going to do, but sometimes all it takes is one person to believe in you. That's it. One person to believe in you, you know? So if I could be that guy for that one workout, that one moment, or throughout the course, or just showing the ropes of what I learned throughout that process, then I done my job. You feel what I'm saying? That's right. So it's just like, I kind of want to, like, I'm gifted in the sense of, like, being able to have these vets that I had across my path that really just gave me pointers and I just listen. Because, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that uh, my father taught me is that you can learn from anybody, you know? Mm -hmm. So I listen to everybody speak. I might not let them know it, but I, I give everybody the chance, the opportunity, because I might take something from that conversation, that segment, or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. they would be like, oh, that's what it was. That's why I meant that person, you know? Mm -hmm. So if I could be that for other people, like that's, you know what I'm saying, my gift itself. Man, talk about some of the people that they say that influenced you, man. I mean, me and you talk on the phone about it, man. And some of the guys that you said that just gave you that little bit, you know. Um, you know, you talked about Reggie. You know, you played with Frank. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you can go into to more, a little more detail. Man, uh, it's a long list of contacts on my phone. Start with the older guys. I would say, like, uh, Avis White from Petersburg. Long, he's still that. Shh. I, Avis, uh, we, not, I'm not saying we have similar paths, but we cross similar paths in our career. Mm -hmm. And he'll reach out to me and be like, hey, this what goes on out here. It might be different now, but mm -hmm. let me tell you this how it is. I'm so proud of you, but be aware for this, work on this, work on that, blah, 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 blah. And he's still like that, you know what I'm saying, down my career. So Avis Wyatt. Uh, Shout out to Avis, man. Yes, sir. Uh, Debo, a guy in Petersburg, which was, when I first moved to Petersburg, he was a guy like, hey, everybody else in the street, but. You come here, we going to Richmond, we playing ball. Oh, yeah, we going to Richmond playing ball again. So we kept all the young guys active playing ball. And if it wasn't for that opportunity, like maybe my summers are different. You know okay. what I'm saying? So him, um, more so recently, um, since the first day I met him, he used to come pick me up from Petersburg too. Uh, Reggie Williams. Shout out to Reg, uh, man. Tyree Evans. He was just in here. <laughs> big, time, big time. Like even today, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we work out on... Um, Every other day at U Turn, and he stuff loves like that. you, man. Yeah, yeah, he's a solid dude. He a sol it's not too many people you meet that's genuinely exactly like he you. He loves yep, you, yep. Solid dude, solid dude, and it's mutual. It's mutual. I talk to him on the phone like about anything. We laugh and joke a lot, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we also talk about real life stuff. But like, he a good, genuine dude, you know. Yep. And his story and his path, like, it's inspirational. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's and, and it's funny because when I talked to him at the game, and he was like, I think you might have been in Missouri. Mm -hmm. And he was like, man, I, he said, man, that that's my dude. Mm -hmm. Love Duvet, man. And I think that Tyree was always misunderstood. Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. anybody who speak that truth and that real, people going to have a problem with it. See, this is the thing with, with me and Tyree. Um, I heard about him when I was in high school, mm -hmm. right? 
but I was confusing him and Rice because the names were similar from right. Richmond. And they played the same time. I'm not from the area. Yep, they played the same time. So I'm not from the area. I said, okay, cool. I met Tyree Rice and, and, and great dude. Shout but out was Tyree. Great dude, great dude. Man, he showed a lot of love when I see him. But when I met him, it's like, that's not the guy that they said he was. It's not the, nah, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So now, like, Knowing that he's a lot older and I respect his path and the way the, the person that he is now, the person, you know, just the complete person. It's just like a lot of things I could see in him is that me being younger, I want to be, but I also respect his path. So a lot of times we had moments in the gym where it's just like, <laughs> yeah, we on the same page. Like, we only had to say much, but it's like, a, yep, I know exactly what's going on. Like, I know how he's doing. I know how he's moving. But one of the things about him, great dude, but he got that same ambition, that same drive. Yes. That same, you know what I'm saying, that. Hey, it, it's going to happen. It's going to be me. I'm going to get it done regardless. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And see, that's the thing. And it's funny that you say that because everybody talked about Tyrese Rice. Mm -hmm. They could connect with Tyrese Rice. Shout out to Tyrese Rice, big man. Big time. Shout out to him. Big, big, big time. time player. You know, I don't know him as a person, but they, they, he was more likable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But Tyree was more raw. Yeah, a lot. And if yeah. Tyree could kind of rub people the wrong way and people had a problem with that. But if you didn't know him, and even I didn't know him, but I connect with guys like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, so what you saw, he was like, this ain't the type of same the stuff that they saying. Mm -hmm. No, no. You know, at all. Know, but at all. he speaks so highly of you. Like, we were just talking. He was just like, do for this, do for this, man. And he, he when I say he loves you, he do. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you I have that genuine respect. Yep, yep. Especially as it goes beyond basketball. Yep, exactly. Beyond basketball. Yep. Beyond basketball. I'm sorry. Keep going, man. Um, um, Coaches, uh, Coach White. John Marshall. Ty White. Shout out to Ty yep. White. We get a lot of that on here. Big time. I wouldn't have nothing for anything basketball related. I'd never have it if it wasn't for Ty White. And he just believed in me. Didn't give me nothing, but gave me an opportunity and a platform. But ain't too many coaches that would just like, hey, I like you for who you are. Come be you right here. I'm not trying to change nothing. I understand. I get you. Be you right here. Mm -hmm. Of course, it takes some pushing and pulling here and there, but, you know, he genuinely was a great person. Let me be myself. Uh, Coach Lawson from um, Petersburg High, he's the AD now. You mm -hmm. know, that was also was my coach in high school. Oh, he's the AD there? Yep, the okay, AD shout out to Coach yep. Lawson, man. Yep. Put in a lot of time. And then I could go I could go on and on, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, as far as like just being thankful. And I'm every time I see him, these people, I'm, I'm very thankful. I re repeat myself again. Coach Simon from Hopewell, people don't even know I played for Hopewell. That was my first school I played for, mm -hmm. you know. So him, uh, the coaching staff there, rest in peace, uh, Bill Littlepage. Yes, rest in just, peace to you know, a legend, so, man. That was my first high school coach. Like, I originally went to, uh, crazy story, I originally went to play for James Pelham because James Pelham was the legend, you know? Oh, yeah, When Pelham. they talk about James Pelham, they talk about Iverson, it was like, They, was, they played that you know game what? that night. <laughs> you know, I just started playing basketball. Like, I wanted to be like my brother, start playing basketball like the eighth grade. So I'm in uh, middle school, right? So I'm like, you know what? Next year, I'm going to go play varsity. The whole gym start laughing, bust out laughing. And I'm like, kind of like so ambitious, like the butterflies kind of want to cry and I'm mad, but I'm like, watch this. That same year, I start dunking the ball. I grew like uh, five inches that summer, right? Really? Between the eighth and the ninth grade, right? Mm -hmm. So my thing was like, I'm going to play for James Pelham, bro. Legend. I gotta play for James Pelham. Because you know, I didn't know Little Page, no disrespect to Little Page, rest right. in peace, but I just did not know about him. I knew about James Pelham. Right. I heard about the Iverson stories, you know? I was like, at that game. I won't go play for him. <laughs> So I went to uh, um, JV tryouts to play for James Pelham, and I was in there being being me, the dog I am. Like, I want who the best. Oh, you played last year. You was a starter. I want to smoke with him. I'm gonna lock him up. I'm gonna dunk on him. I'm going all out. Like, I'm gonna make this team. I'm gonna start for this team. <laughs> wow, that's you. yeah, that's you. At man. all times, even at 30 years old, same person. I was at like that since a kid. So I be telling people like, no, nah, this ain't a bluff. Like, this always been me, and this right. always will be me. When I'm done with the game. I'm shutting it down 100% because right. I give 110% when I play. So uh, fast forward in the story, trials go good. I think so. But James Pelham pulled me to the side when it's over. He said, you can't play here. And I'm like, I, I, do, I, just, I can't. Come with me. I'm going to take you home. He picked me up. Well, I was already there in the gym at um, <laughs> Melanie in Hopewell. Okay. Where the trials was hosted at. He directly took me to the varsity trials at the high school. It was like, this is where you're going to play at. And introduced me to Coach Simon, introduced me to Lil Page. Okay. And I'm like, no, nah, this 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 varsity, like, 
I said I was going to do it, but you serious? Like, wow. I want to play for you. Like, so I never got the chance to play for James Pelham. I bump into him in the gym now, and I get to see him and stuff. But it's like, yo, what if, you know, just like, so shout out to him, because like, what if he never does that? Right. Which way does my career go? Like, he seen something in me. He was like, you know what? This kid can do it. He's going to be the one. So no JV for you. Like, go here. I wanted to play JV to play for him. Right. And learn from him. But it's see like, what I'm saying? You know, so it's like, yo, all right, like I'll play varsity. And then since then, Coach Simon was the one, like every Sundays he'll pick me up. Yo, we're working on form shoot. We're working on this. There's so much you got to catch up on because you ain't been playing basketball. Mm -hmm. What you been, you know, what you been doing your whole life? Like, Damn, I work, didn't know work, that. Work, 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 yep. Work, 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 work all the time. Like every Sunday we got it in. Of course, we had practice during the week, but Sundays would be my days to just lock in and get stuff done. Wow, man! You know, because we talked for the first time, and I don't recall we even hearing that story. So this yeah. is new, man. That, There's so much in the stories, right? Like, you know, yeah, just, you know, <laughs> yeah. Y'all gotta go check out that old episode that we did last mm -hmm. last year during COVID, man. You know, Duvy Maxwell, great story, man. Wow, that see, this is an addition to that story. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Yes, sir. Wow, yes, sir. and it's crazy because I thought that Pelham was up there coaching at Fork Union at one time. Because when my son yes, was playing, he was. he was. He was the head yep. coach up there for the high school team. He was, yep. yeah. He was. So that that's good, man. So like I said, in that area, it's small, but Hope Way and Petersburg had a lot of legends, man. Yes, sir. And you are yes, on that list because, yes, I, I, you know, I always go back and talk about that Petersburg game yeah. where I felt like that, yeah, you know, you should have – I wanted you to win that state championship more yeah. than anything. Man. yeah. Yeah, and sure. that 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 minute or whatever you was out that game, I don't care. Yep, that changes the complexity of the Virginia high school league basketball it because did. Norcom don't repeat. I agree. I agree. I agree. If y'all, if you, if you had got that nosebleed in that game, I agree. I agree. Yep, I agree. But um, one of the things I just see now, and is I seen, I'm seeing life and things from different view because like now with me training kids and stuff. I'm finally okay with that loss. And it sounds crazy. They be like, why? Like, how could you say that? Like, you supposed to win everything? Like, yeah, but I gave 110% that. Yes. So, like, we lost because I was not on the floor upon uncontrollable things that took place. Right. But on the floor, I gave 110%. Everything. And if you feel like anything you do in life, if you give 110%, I don't care what happens. Right. God, God took his way. You know what I'm saying? It was supposed right. to happen that way. It's supposed to happen. But if way. I gave 110%, I can live with the results. And and, results. and that's why I said we can never, ever, ever be mad at you. It's like, to me, I won't compare you to Kobe Bryant, but I remember Kobe Bryant, or his wife, was saying that she asked him, why don't you just take a game off? Or I guess he was icing his <laughs> knees, and she was yeah. like, you know, I want to give the kids, you know, people that, you know, that can't, that they come, pay, they, they come to see me play, I want to give them that. Yeah. I don't want to do that. And for me, with you, You've always did that. Petersburg come to town. Yeah, we know everybody was coming to see Frank. But when you was there, yeah. and like I told you, and you heard what my son said, no, we were coming to see Doofy. Yeah. Like, we yeah. we know what you going to give. Yeah, yeah. And that's something that you can't teach. So when you started the, the program, I said, this would be perfect for him. Yeah. Because when I saw the videos, and that's why I posted the videos, when you was with the kid, I said, he giving the kid as if, the way he do it. Mm -hmm. Like, you up there, knock like, dog, no, you got to keep going up here. That You was doing a drill. Mm -hmm. And I said, he not going to just take your money. Mm -hmm. He going to do it right. Yep. And if he yep. can't do it right, he going to take your money. Yep. And I, I tell parents all the time, like, it's not about the money. Like, right now, you know, just to be open and, uh, you know, transparent, like, I'm going to have the market rate. Like, I know what the market rate is. I'm going to have the market rate because I know I'm new. Right. I know I'm new. I'm, I'm struggling and suffering with certain things right now because of me being new. So, like, a lot of these kids meet that, uh, how could I call it a term like that point of like fatigue in a workout okay like when it smacks you in the face like all right I'm getting work like you know for me personally mm -hmm. I always fought through that because I, I knew tell. tomorrow it won't happen like it, it's gonna burn today but tomorrow it ain't gonna burn the same way and then a week from now it ain't gonna burn a month from now I'm gonna be good you know See what I'm saying so I'm trying to learn how to get other people to do that same thing because there's a little bit of craziness into that to where like yo this hurt it doesn't feel good but it doesn't scare me so I'm gonna keep going but when you look back it's like damn that same little thing is nothing no more you know mm -hmm. so I kind of want to you know I'm trying to learn how to translate that to younger guys you know and I work out adults as well just where it translates like you know you could be so much more better if you just don't stop Okay. Like, just don't stop. It's just small little things taking care of your body, staying healthy. Yeah, but, you know, if you do those small little things, don't stop. It's just going to hurt a little bit. Right. 
it won't last forever. It won't last forever. It won't man. last forever. Yep. And it's uh crazy you said that you talked about Kobe Bryant and that story. Um one of my crazy stories, not trying to relate anything to Kobe Bryant. Right, like, I'm right. never be that good. Rest in <laughs> peace to the legend, man. But Definitely. uh I tore my ACL my second season overseas. Didn't know that, man. Don't nobody know this. I had my agent at the time told me not to tell nobody. He told right. me not to tell nobody for marketing reasons. So okay. If right. you know my ACL's torn, you're not going to sign me. That's true. So people wonder why I start wearing braces and start wearing the long sleeves because my ACL was torn and my leg was like so puffed up. Mm -hmm. I had two options. I could get a surgery, which would take eight months, or I could go naturally and do rehab and get six months. Right? Okay. I made a post. I had to post up for, uh, I want to say, not even 24 hours. My agent called me, take it down. No, you're going to be back on the floor, blah, blah, blah. I ended up firing him uh, for something else other than that. Mm -hmm. But the um, person that saw that post was Quinn Spain. When they played, for the, yep, yeah, played in the NFL for the, uh, he just played in the Super Bowl. He played in the Super Bowl, yep. your former teammate. His trainer, Roger. Saw that post, DM me. Hey, what's up, man? Been wanting to work with you for a long time. Blah, 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 blah. I see your situation. I could fix all that, get your strength right back. And I'm like, he the only person willing to take a chance on me. I'm working on one leg. I couldn't walk because I don't know if you know when the ACL, like your leg buckles, you have nothing to stand on. Okay, yeah, I never So if I try to stand straight up without the brace, like my leg, I fall on Ooh. one leg. So I, I was unstable. Man, I got it in with Roger at uh, Defy Genetics. Uh, he killed me. He killed me. I was on the floor at the end of every workout. But it's that same motivation, that same right. drive, which yeah. is like, nah, it ain't going to hurt tomorrow. And in four months, I was back on the court. Are you serious? Four months with a torn ACL. My my my. She was my best friend at the time. We wasn't dating like that. We wasn't together at item. But my wife was at the time like, nah, I was going three times a day with a torn ACL because I wanted it that bad. It's different for me because there's no silver spoon background. If I ain't had basketball... I don't got a lot of things I got today. So it's like, I can't take a year off from this. Mm -hmm. I got to get it now. I, like, they talking about eight months. That's a season. Right. Season 10 months. I got to get it now. So with the torn ACL and, and hiring Roger and going to Roger all the time at uh, Defy Genetics, like, that saved my life. Because I was like, back playing, I wasn't I wasn't 100%. I'm going to be 100% honest. In that same year, I was playing in Canada. Mm-hmm. Cause I told my it was ACL second year in Mexico. My first year in Mexico was my second season playing. Man, I was in Canada and I was uh, first team all all all, all NBL and defensive player of the year. See what I'm saying? On one leg and don't nobody know that, but the people close to me and they wonder why I was wore the long sleeves and okay. And nah, I had one leg literally. I just got comfortable jumping on that leg in France my first year. That's the first time I say I'm back. I could jump again, like yeah. wow. Yeah, and see, that's that's that dog mentality that you always have, man. Mm -hmm. And that's why it, it is crazy because when I started balling the VA, brought it back to where we are now in the studio form, and it was funny that I said, "Man, I got to have. I want to send a message." I want to come out powerful. I want to have this drive. Yes, sir. And that's why I called, I, I text you. I said, hey, man, do you mind if I use one of your videos? And if y'all watch the intro, you know, going back to the Verano one, this was the guy right here, in case y'all didn't know, that was doing the dunk. I had you and Chris Clock mm -hmm. on there because I, I, I'm i about the same thing, mm -hmm. but I just didn't play. Yeah. And I wanted to use you because that's what you that pitted me. That's what you, 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 you just stand for that, man. You're not going to let anything defeat you. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always just, I said, this, he's my guy. So shout out to Quentin Spain and his trainers, yep. man, yep. to save definitely get you, to save you back, man, because we need that, man. Yep. We need more guys like that. Yep. And every kid that you train ain't going to be like you, yep. but they can know how to train and, you know, go through a little adversity because you're going to have injuries sure. and stuff sure. like that. For sure. So, yeah. So uh, how many train, how many um, clients that you actually have that are younger and old? What's like, what's the difference, like the ratio there? Adult clients right now, I probably got like three. Okay. But my, like my adult workouts uncut. Okay. I kicked the client out for the first time. Really? I don't, adults, I don't put up with it. Like, I, I don't blame you. Because my, my, my train is like, you know, like Roger used to kill me. Mm -hmm. Like I'll be like, this is one of the things I do in my workouts. I'll be like, ah. All right, let me breathe. And Roger start counting. He go, 10, 9, 
Mm-hmm. Hey, so that mentality is, is stuck with me now, you know, just from listening and learning from him. Because it's like when I'm tired, I'm hurt. It's like, all right, 10, 9, 8, you know, and mm-hmm. on the hop, if you can't get it, probably not going to get it. Yeah. The thing is with my shorter patience with the older clients because their window is a lot smaller. These That's kids true. are learning. So I, I spend a lot of time, I, like the workouts be like an hour. It's probably spend 20 minutes before or after that talking to the kid. Okay. Because I want them to understand. I'm just not, I'm not just teaching skills. as like, I wasn't the most skilled person ever. Right. right. But I understood the game. Right. I understood the game. So as I'm going up heads up in, in high school with kids that's way more talented than me, it didn't matter mm-hmm. because I'm here. You can win this game, that game, but you're not going to win this no, one. No, you're not. You're not going to win this one. Like, I'm going to, you know, so that's the biggest thing I got. A lot of these trainers, they spend a lot of time teaching skill. What you going to do with that? Thank you. How's it going to translate? Did right. you teach them the game? Like, this is exactly when I want you to use this and understand how to use this move or this angle and how to use this. I don't see that a lot. And I hired a lot of trainers around here locally before I got into the business myself. So Okay. And see... You know, and I'm, I'm going to mention something, man, and it's no disrespect when I say this. Mm-hmm. Would you just say that mental part is big? Yes, yes, sir. You can have all the skill, and the reason why I say this, I looked at Megan Walker, number one basketball player in class of 2017, mm-hmm. Audemars mm-hmm. went to UConn, mm-hmm. and I know a lot of people may dislike whatever I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. And there's no respect. And if you take it that way, I don't care. Mm-hmm. She made it to the WNBA. And you know it's a grind trying to get to the NBA there, or the pro. Yeah, it's sure. being a pro, period. Yeah. I know she's playing overseas. And to go off topic, and I'm going to get back to you because I'm going to spend too much time on it. No, no, no. you good. Some people can have all the skill in the world. But when it comes to that mentality... If you don't have a dish, you're not going to make it. She got cut every year in the WNBA. She got drafted 2020, and she got cut every year. And I try to explain to people, you see, we we saw it, but we kind of like celebrated because she made from here. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want to see anybody fail. No, 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 no. But one thing that I think that she struggles with is that mental toughness. Yeah. Because when adversity hit. You gotta be able when you fall, you gotta be able to get back up. And I just think that with her being cut, I think she fell all the way down now. And you can have all this skill, but if you don't have that mentality to, to push through and make it, that skill, like you said, it's not gonna matter. Mm-hmm. And right now, I think she's struggling through that part. And I think I heard yesterday she's actually gone back over Turkey yeah. over there. And I'm hoping I wish her nothing but the best, man. Yeah. But I just think that she lacked that part yeah. because you can obtain something, but you gotta maintain it and retain it. Yeah, yeah. And it's you got there, but you gotta be able to maintain and retain it. And that's what you talk about with yeah. you have all the skill in the world, but you gotta have this. Yeah. And everybody don't have that that mental toughness. Yeah. Yeah. And you, I just think you're like the face of that. If that's the uh, space in the dictionary with mental toughness, your face needs to be right there. Man, shout out uh, Nick Barber. You remember Nick Barber? Yeah, I remember him. Lefty. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, he tried out with the Spurs. Had a, uh, broke his nose on the first. Really? Out. Yeah. He did good in the uh, what's it called? Pit. Yeah. The uh, yep. Portsmouth, Portsmouth invitation. He did very good out there. Got invited to the training camp. Broke his nose. But that was my big homie coming into college. So he told me one of the things he told me, and I used to listen out, we used to hang out a lot. He said, hey, look, let me tell you this young blood, because he's always like the young, <laughs> the young OG acting kind of dude. Right. But he, yep. oh, he's the same person now. He just always was like an old man. Okay. Take some young blood, like, look around everybody in this room. And you laughing. I was laughing because I'm young. Look around everybody in this room. They're not going to be here. Right? And just, they're not going to be here. Watch. Watch what I'm saying. They're not going to be here. Mm. Right? So I remember him saying that, and that was true. But that translates to every year, every season, every country you go to. Right. But that's just like the mental part of it. I don't know Megan Walker. And I wish her the right. best. I was been a fan of her because she from around the area. For right. She get a chance. She get an opportunity. So I'm automatic. I'm automatically biased. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's so just automatic. I wish her the best. But like I seen so many, just a long list of people I could say like that, that helped me along the way. Right. I got that same amount of people that I seen that was far more talented, but... See what I'm saying? Look at my class. Like, coming out to my class, like, I was on the bottom of the list. I finished up there at the top. Wow. And that's because of the same thing. And mm-hmm. 
go back, watch the film. They didn't have this. Was talented as ever. Right. They had 40 points against this team, that team. But when you play me and us, because it's, 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 it's contagious. That's true. It's contagious. When you play us, when we get our chance of opportunity, you don't got this, you don't got this, you ain't going to survive. And see, that's the thing. Because if you, like I said, I, and you know I hate to go back to that game, but y'all didn't have a, a deep rotation in that game. No, sir. And, 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 and no, Vic sir. Spain, when he was running down there, going back to the North and Petersburg game of, what was it, 2012? 2010. 2010. Yep. And he was – Big Spain was tired. Yep. Frank was tired. All y'all was tired. Yep. And but 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 you saw it just like y'all just kept pushing through because you had because that game was like a real real rugged low scoring game, man. And but like you said, that mental discipline yeah. to push through and get through, man. Yeah. And anybody see that game? That game went down to the last second. Yep. The very last second. And he made that layup with no seconds left to win that game. Yep. And I just say that y'all was pushed through. Y'all had the victory was already won. Mm -hmm. But like I said, but I, like y'all was gasping for air. But it was just like like you said, that hurt. It hurt. But I gotta still push through. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, man. That's why I said you just the epitome. Like that's what you do, man. Appreciate it. And that's why I said to anybody that's going to be watching this, please support my man. He got his shirts today, Max Development. You know, says draft fit. That they're going for 35. I'm telling you, you roll with this brother right here. You're going to get whatever it is, whatever he charges, you're going to get every single dime. It's going to be well worth it. Yep. I mean, because if I had a kid that was playing right now or somebody I would refer I would definitely go this way because it's not all about the skill set. It's his passion and his commitment. Yep. And if you ever seen Duvon Maxwell play, go to go to YouTube or ask it, people around. They're going to tell you. You're you going to see it. And I ain't even got to oversell it to you. So just want to just put that out there for, for my listeners and, and people that's going to be viewing. But so they can know a little bit more about you, man, for the people who didn't see it on the first season. Um Talk about your career overseas, man, of life. Because I know you was over in Ukraine last season and everything going on with the war, you, everything. Talk about how mentally stressful and, 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 and but rewarding it is, man. That's, that's one of the things. Um, Javante Green, who was my cousin now, you know, played for the Chicago Bulls. Bulls, right. He was explaining the difference, like... <laughs> You, like if you know his story, like mm -hmm. we started, and I don't overseas. know too much about him, but yeah. I heard about him. If you know his stories, how he started overseas and where he at now, so it was just like everything about it. I'm just like this, like shout out to Javante man, too. Like you cold, like you got what it takes here and here. Okay, you know, or you don't because you got to be absolutely crazy to go to manage some of the things you face and see overseas. You mm -hmm. know, like we sitting here discussing Ukraine. Like I'm on the phone saying prayers with my family. Like yo. I accepted the fact that I came over here. Like it's one of the things, you know, it's a risk, and it's some. It's like a one percent chance that you'll be facing the opportunity, where it's just like, hey, they're gonna bomb this country. They're gonna bomb it, right? And it's mm -hmm. going to happen. And I'm getting this from inside sources, and I'm not talking about inside sources of CNN and, and the media. I don't mm -hmm. get into that. Right. I'm talking about United States government officials left this country, vanished the country because they're guaranteed 100 sure they're gonna bomb this country. And they keep talking to me about a game, a basketball game. Okay. I'm still here. So if I'm going to be gone, I'm going to do it playing basketball. Right. So I'm going to play up into the moment that I'm gone. And that's exactly what I did. Um, I try to work it out negotiation-wise. And it's like one of the mental games you got to play. Okay. They told me no. Them people stole – hmm, I don't even think I'm comfortable saying it on camera. But like I said, you said, you don't have to. They stole – a crazy amount of money for me because I just said, I don't want to die. That's literally what I told him. I said, I don't want to die. And they verbatim repeated back to me, uh, Putin is stupid, but he's not crazy. Mm. Right? Well, he's crazy and not stupid. And I'm like, huh, what do you mean by that? Oh, he's not going to bomb. Yes, I got emails, endless emails, text messages. Devon is safe here. They didn't even know how to spell my name. I'm the best player on this team. They spell my name D-U-V-O-N. So I'm processing all this, all this stuff. stuff. right. I'm like, you know what? I'm still giving 110%. My numbers stayed up. Okay. I stayed positive because it's like, man, so I'm going to translate out of this. And this is like the mental toughness. I got it out of there by the grace of God. I booked me a ticket. Man, I want to say I had a game at 7 o'clock, finished the game, got out at 9. My flight was at 1. 
So I had to travel to Kiev, the capital, like two hours, two two and a half hours to get there. Wow. You know, and all this is on my, because I'm doing it behind their back. Because I try everything, because I'm on a guaranteed contract. So this money is mine, regardless of what. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I come home, and I'm just like, I suffered with, like, PTSD behind that, because I couldn't sleep. They, they, they played with firecrackers a lot during that time. Mm. And the firecrackers would hit me like, Yo, I think one time we was playing Call of Duty with my brothers and the headphones on, and uh, the firecrackers was going on crazy, and I couldn't hear it because my headphones, but my brothers and them heard it, and I couldn't see nothing. They said, yo, you hear that? And they're aware of the situation that's going on. So it's just like the PTSD behind that, just like, man, like don't feel comfortable around certain things. Like just looking up in the sky every night for like two weeks straight, was that was the negotiation stage of the period. It was like, man, am I going to die out here? Nah. I prayed enough, everything good. Mm -hmm. So to make it out there gracefully, come home, I didn't rest. I was like, I was getting it. I was uh, going through a moving situation between uh, my old crib and my new crib, but I was just working out first thing in the morning, taking my daughter to uh, the babysitter, mm -hmm. working out again, like just like doing too much to stay focused here. Cause like, man, something gonna happen. But won't nobody calling me cause they had have, they have my rights. Okay. So because the country didn't get bombed yet, I. Abandoned my team oh, to FIBA, man. right? Because the bombing didn't happen yet. When the bombing happened, it's like, okay, now we could go get Devon Maxwell because it's official. He was right for why he left. Man, I had so many death threats and bad things in my DMs from these people. Are you serious? Seriously, from these people. I would just show it, I would just show it to my fiance at the time. I'm like, man, look at this. And I'll just laugh it off. I might probably respond to like two people, mm -hmm. you know, in an uncivilized manner, in a civilized manner, trying to get them to explain. But it's like, bro, you over here attacking me when the reality about to hit y'all, you know? Right. And everybody's like, pray for these people, pray for these people. Like, I wish the best for everybody. But the way they treated a lot of us during that time, mm -hmm. um, the boy from D.C. area. Yeah. He was the last one to leave. Right, right. Because he struggled to get out of there. And I know his situation. They did not want to let us go. That was my own bread I threw up there to get out of there. My wow. own money. The team is responsible for my flight. Never got that money back. I never see it. They also took so much out of my contract. I never see it. But it's like, that's one of the things you deal with overseas. That's that mental toughness. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because I started to get down on myself, and I'm still working hard. And I went to the Chicago Bulls game to go see uh, Javante play, which is mm -hmm. one of the things. It's like I never been to an NBA game until I watched him play. Wow. You know, I always wanted to see Frank play. But the same time he played, I was overseas. Yeah, overseas, I was going to ask you and that too. Frank went to, he played in Paris, and I lived an hour from Paris. They played that game with the Milwaukee Bucks in Paris, and we had away game. Wow, man, that's crazy. Because I was going to ask you, I said, I know they played over there. My teammates, big Buck fans, because they love Giannis. Okay. Right, and I'm like, man, Frank, the bro, like, we going to go to the game? They said, you lying. And I looked at the schedule the day before, I said, yo, we got to go tomorrow. I felt so bad, but uh, I say that to say this. So we watching um, coincidence. We watching Milwaukee and Chicago play, and I want to say it's halftime. Okay. My agent texts me. He was like, "Where are you at right now?" I'm like, uh, "You know." I'm, he said, uh, "We gotta get you on a flight to New York tomorrow and go to the Philippines." I'm like, "What?" Like. My flight is in two days to go back to Virginia. Right. And he's like, nah, like, you want this job. You wow. want this job. Wow. And I'm like, I looked at the contract. I said, yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. I do want this job. Right. That's I do right. want this job. Man, so that uh, the time span I was home was like a month and a half from Ukraine and working out and just having faith that I'll get my release and I'll get another job opportunity. Mm -hmm. Man, I went out there my first night. I had a hell of a opponent. I'm not going to say his name because he, he got cut after this game. Mm. I gave his ass 21 and 21. Like, <laughs> that's where I was at. Like, y'all got to pay for everything that I was going Go through to, over right. there. That's right. In my time period, I've been waiting. Like, nah, like, I'm still that same little kid, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. from Petersburg. So, Ain't man, 21 and 21, I had so much more smoke. Um, we tapped out in the playoffs because of the fact that we're just a new team. I'm coming right before the two games before the playoffs, so we had so much adjusting to teams that had their system since January, you okay. know? So, 
that's just like you no know, prime example of just like the mental toughness of just like can you survive something like that like if somebody telling you your life is at risk like are you gonna give up the game are you gonna quit are you gonna do what you can because that's all you literally can do that's right but see that's what i try to explain to these kids you know or these people you know young young adults that wants to go overseas and they play ball and they see you guys come back and you know and y'all play in, in the different things but they don't understand the whole nuances of everything that go along with that mm -hmm. you know for you to be playing eight years you know Bless. over there man you are blessed man because everybody i mean i had jasmine young sitting here a couple sundays ago and i think jasmine said she played three she couldn't do it no more yeah you know yeah. now she's successful as the assistant associate head coach at in norfolk state mm -hmm. but she had a lot of there for her journey and everything she mm -hmm. do every it's not meant for everybody you know, everybody wants to make it one day to make it to the NBA or WNBA, you know, or at, at the top of their profession or whatever they're doing. But yep, yep. the reality is that we don't always get there. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said for me to bring somebody like yourself in here, and I appreciate every last one of my guests to come in and take time with me to talk about different things because we don't know. All we, we look at the paper, man, Doovie overseas or yeah. Tyree over there or Jazz over there or, you know, Tyrese Rice or, you know, whoever else. Yeah. But we don't know what we go behind. Y'all ain't got no family. Yeah, yeah. You know, yep. I just seen Walt, Walt Williams over there now, mm -hmm. you know, overseas and stuff yeah, like this. Yeah, shout out to Walt. Shout yeah, out shout out to Walt. And I was like, man, and I know he's big on family yeah. and everything like that. And it's so, and I want to say this too before I go to my rant. I love all of you. And I think you're setting a great example because a lot of the young people, are now taking care of responsibilities. You got family, you guys are getting married younger yep. and everything like that. And it's good to see that, man. Mm -hmm. Young black brothers mm -hmm. that's doing it because we're not expected to make it out yeah. wherever we at. Nope. So to see you guys taking care of your families and your responsibilities, man, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I think, or well, for me personally, like, I ain't have no family growing up. Like, it's crazy as it may sound, like, I grew up in New York. Mm -hmm. like, so I grew up in the low east side of New York and Baruch, right? Mm -hmm. And I had family in Jacob Reese. I had family in Harlem, a lot of family in Brooklyn. And we was tight once upon a time. And I'm a kid, so kids always innocent. I don't know the true full story behind it. I know allegations and stuff like that. You know, family mm -hmm. don't never keep it real with the kids. Mm -hmm. But, like, growing up, we moved to Virginia, you know, for a new start, better life. Mm -hmm. And I like I just even at my wedding I had mm, three family members from New York come. Really? And when I tell you my family deep, my family is deep. Wow. Know? And I heard their side, their side about the family breakup, but I didn't have that growing up. I didn't have the support of, you know, I had two aunties, my grandma growing mm -hmm. up, my you know, my mom and pops, you know, which had a, like a back and forth relationship. So that's all we had, our support system. I also had, was in the house with five brothers. Right. Right. And one of them went off to college, so it made four. So that was it. And I just told myself, I said, man, no matter what, when it's my turn, we ain't breaking up. We ain't, you know what I'm saying? Adults going to be adults, and we going to handle that the adult way. But the kids, they ain't never going to have this feeling again. That's right. Because it's funny, it's like – uh. As I started finding success in basketball, you know, I think when right around the time we was ESPN top twenty five in Petersburg. Okay. I had a sister reach out to me, half blood sister. Really? Me, right. Reach out to me. She was around me when I was younger, um, but she just wanted more from me than I could give her. And I'm the younger brother. Like I just want to post my brother, show this world this is my brother, this and that. Mm -hmm. And she made a promise to me, and she was like, "Oh, I'm so proud of you. If you uh, graduate high school, I'm gonna get you a PSP. You remember the PSP? Mm, yeah. yeah I <laughs> so I graduated because it's not like a you know and that's a big thing, right? You graduated high school, cool. Hit her up, just didn't respond. And I'm like, so now it makes sense because all you did was post me, show the world to me. Right. We had more conversations on the Facebook wall or my was it MySpace back then? My MySpace pop, wall yep. than actually text messages you have my number right you know so it's like you know what now i got a chance to, to change to break the cycle with my kids nah we ain't doing that yeah like, you don't play that we ain't doing that my kids might not be on the camera might not be in the front line but they always around always in my heart always on the phone like 24 7 that's like that's you know what i'm saying that's the cycle that we breaking now and granted i got my brothers and close family members that's just on the same thing yep on the same thing kids always first man 
So I'm, I'm yeah, you that. speak on that. Me and you always speak on that, man. Yes, I sir. talk about that. You like, no, nah, I, I don't play about my kids, mm-hmm. man. My kids gonna eat. You know, if I if I gotta sacrifice, my kids gonna eat first. You mm-hmm. know, and all of that stuff, man. And I when I saw when I saw the pictures and the videos and stuff of your wedding, man. Mm-hmm. You know, you had Bo Jones and there. Shout out to Bo. You know, a lot of people. It it, it looked. I dropped the ball. I should have had you on my wedding, man. Man, I, look, I should have had you on my wedding. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest that. with you. That whole sh- was a blur. It, it, yeah, it's it really a blur. is. Like I could remember proposing and. The idea of trying to propose, and then I wake up today, and it's really a ring stuck on my finger. I'm like, it's so much things I could have done better. The actual wedding was beautiful itself, right? But like coordinating and and trying to get the right people there, this and that, like I dropped the ball on that. And that's one thing I take responsibility because, like, man, even my um my grooms, man, like it's probably like just based off life situations, probably three people I really would have had, three or four people I would have had in there, and I had seven, seven, no nine. Mm-hmm. At nine, it's like four people I would have had in there originally, but I'm trying to do the culture, the culture being right. I had, you know. Man, like I said, most of the weddings that that that's more for the women. Yeah, you know they yeah. that's their day. Yeah, we just have to show up for yeah. them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So we don't we don't go into Preach. planning. All the all all the women want to do is just say, hey, don't, you better show up. Yep. I don't care who you bring. Yep, this is our day, and that's more. Of, of what they want to do, you can go to the justice of peace, far as I'm concerned, and, and just knock it out that way. So I, mm-hmm. I definitely understand that. So mm-hmm. no, man, I just saw you. It, you were so happy, man. Yeah, and definitely. you just definitely. and the point I'm trying to make is that you ain't no dude that front, man. Nah, like people nah. can see you out front because you know sometimes, like you said, you're doing your business, and people say, "Let me look and see what type of business he who he is." Yeah, because yeah. you can be different from what you show. Yeah, no, yeah, what you see is what you get all the time. Yeah, for sure. genuine, for sure. real yeah. dude. Man, that's gonna give you whatever he got, and if he can't do it, he gonna tell you what it is. So mm-hmm. I was like, no, nah, uh, uh-uh, uh, man. I just the fact that you was happy. Hey, man, yep. I'm good. Yep. I'm good, man. I ain't never danced or smiled that much in my life, man. Like I said, <laughs> man, hey, it's okay, man, man. That was fun, man. It was fun, definitely fun. But we, like I said, man, we just said shout out to your family and everybody yes, who sir. showed up, yes, man. Sir. Yes, sir. But um, I saw I came across a video the other day, man. You know, um, y'all playing over in the TBT. How was that experience, man? Woo. Uh, we was outnumbered, outgunned, um, suffered a lot of injuries mm-hmm. for the original roster. Yeah. The original roster, well, first of all, Coach White called me. Okay. And if Coach White called me, it's a yes every time. Okay. I'm never telling Coach White no, you know. Okay. My dog, I'm rocking with him, I haven't talked to him. We haven't been like in good communication a long time just because he's busy and I'm busy and I'm always overseas. But mm-hmm. he called me with the idea and told me the roster. I said, all right, I'll talk to the other guys. You don't need to talk to me. Like, I'm, I'm there. So our roster changed so much because of injuries. Uh, a couple guys got called overseas early right. and stuff like that. So that changed a lot. But with the core that we did have, like, it affected us in the main factor. The reason why we lost was just rebounding. Mm-hmm. Like, everything else, like we had everything else. Like we played undersized, we played small ball, mm-hmm. but we suffered with rebounding. That's what you know. But for me, it was just another game. It's just like a high level game, not just another game, but another high level game where it's just like the lights is on. So those are the moments that you you just stand up, and and I think that everybody else supposed to stand up, sit up, and we got what we wanted from it, and we coming back next year with a stronger understanding of how to get things done. I'm glad the first year guys got it. Their, 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 foot, their feet wet in the right. situation, and now we're ready to come back swinging next year. Well, I, I liked it because I liked the core guys that y'all had, yeah. which y'all, I, I loved it. You know what I'm saying? More so, I was happily, happy, happily. I was happy for Walt because okay. Walt, one of the guys that just needed the stage. Like, yeah, yeah, shout he's out to Walt. been knocking on the door for years, yes. right? Yes. And you can't control who behind the door, who hold the key, who willing to open the door. All you control is how hard you knock. And with, I think with the TBT, his TBT experience, he kicked the door down. He so sure did. That was much more important for me being an older guy because nothing much going to change for my career from the TBT game. You know, right. They know who I am. But for him to get his opportunity now to perform in the TBT the way he did, it's like. Yeah, I heard it. It's, it's like opening up doors. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I was sitting on the side after the one I heard it was somewhere in. I uh, heard Parkaway and, and, yep. and Reggie talking, and they yep. was like, and, and Malik Johnson. Yep. Shout out to all those guys, sure. man. And they sure. was just like, no, for Walt, mm-hmm. it did big it things did. for him. But Reggie, you know, Reggie being a man, Reggie's a hell of a guy, man. Like, just a giving dude. Like, even today, he just inv- he just invested in my business and gave me something towards my business. You know? Man, that's big, you know, man. Just, just out of, you know, it's so crazy because 
I can't. I ain't gonna say exactly what it is. I just don't want to detail it. But I gave a client some last night just because he wanted it. And I'm just like, man, I can't really. But you know what? I really like. It ain't about the money. It ain't about just that here. Okay. And I woke up and then what I gave him, Reggie, tr- gave me four times that. And I'm like, that's crazy, Reggie. Let me tell you how God working. I explained the story to him. It probably went one ear out the other because he he just gave just because he want to give. Mm-hmm. But when Reggie uh, came up with the idea and the roster for the thing, I was like, man, you know, roster kind of we small. We you know what I'm saying. He said, look. I'm gonna tell you two things. We gonna win. I'm gonna get y'all paid, and that's exactly what happened. Cause he coached like, the game, right? Yeah, he coached. Yeah, it. yeah. He coached yeah. It. I kept telling him to play, but he's like, "Nah, I'm coaching." <laughs> he still got it, no, man. He, 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 he still worked out with it. us this morning. He still play with us. Really? Uh, in seven a.m. every other day. Yeah. Oh, that's good, man. Okay. Shout out to Reg, yes, man. Sir, like I said, I don't Reg. know him, but hell of a guy. When I guy. see him, like I came past, him. you know, he playing the mature league over there with <laughs> Fats Bird yeah. and all them and Tyree. Yeah. When I see him. He seems like he's a very, very genuine, genuine dude. Guy. Genuine dude. Like, like he wants, like, it's like, okay, you know this guy played in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? You would never know. Here. You would never you know. You would never know. You would never know because when I told Tyree, I said, Tyree was the player of the year. Reggie was on that all Metro team. Yep. Was yep. him and, and that Metro that team was crazy. That was crazy, right? Crazy. And so I'm like, but Tyree was like, larger than life. And I said, who's the Reggie Williams guy? Yep. But when I looked him up, I said, oh God, that just was crazy. I look back on it now. And, but every time I see him, you walk like, you want to speak to him, mm-hmm. but you don't want to be like no groupie type of dude. Like, I guess, I, but but see, I don't know him, but you can feel it like, keep like waiting for you to yeah. embrace you. And I just said, man, you know, I'm just going to walk up to him man, and just talk to him and stuff like that because he seemed like he's just an open guy. That so was like, what I learned about Reggie, like he talked to me like, oh, we went out to eat while we was out there at uh, in West Virginia. He talked to me the same way he talked to the, the waiter at, uh, what's, what's it, John, Long, Longhorn. Or, okay. Or, uh, no, Outback. Oh, back. He talked to everybody the same way. Like, genuine, humble genuine dude. dude. So bad that I asked him. I don't want to think three times before. I said, yo, do you know and did you really think that you was lead the nation in scoring two years in a row? Like, do you know what you did? Did you know that was going to be like? He said, man, hell no. Whoever think they're going to lead the nation in scoring? Like, <laughs> I would have uh, never thought that. You know what I'm saying? But just, that's just like, yo, like, because the reason why I asked that because you would never know that's Reggie Williams unless you, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. If you looked at the the you know the, the the resume and meant to do, you'd be like, nah, that gotta be this guy over here, the one that's over there with all the chain and jury and, and flashy and, and, and talking real loud. Right. Oh, humblest dude ever. Humble. Humblest dude ever. Humblest dude ever. Yeah, man. I was like from Prince George and I was just mm-hmm. like, led the nation in scoring and like it's a play with several teams in the NBA. And when yes, you sir. see him, man, it's just yes, like sir. And it just seemed like he just having fun and enjoying himself, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, so that's why I was just like, yeah. all y'all guys have a connection because I told you I can't never go without a show talk about 757. Well, but I tell them guys, man, Prince George, Dinwiddie, Petersburg, Hopewell, some tough guys, man. Funny story about Reggie, the reason why we over is, you know, Reggie always like guide me on the court. He said, hey, do that move was cool, but next time we're going, taking it here, taking it there. But we got this like this uh this uh co- competitive relationship because mm. he hosted the, the his own pro am. Okay. Reggie Williams pro am. I remember he had plan, that. right? And that summer I was just smoking. Like I was smoking. Man, I, I had like it was a very well respected NBA player locally. Mm-hmm. I gave him fifty in the bend. Wallace uh, pro am like okay. literally fifty. I'm not talking about high forties or high thirties. I gave him fifty ball in the Ben Wallace joint. Wow! Turned around, gave him fifty at um, Reggie pro am, and then we played in the championship game. We lost, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, Reggie gonna lie and say it's not true, but I promise, <laughs> trust me, it's true. I gave him fifty again. He not gonna question that. I gave him fifty ball. He even took. I don't got the text message. Old phone. He said, man. I'm proud of you. You can't came along, blah blah blah. You had 50. It's not. It's crazy. But I feel like you just pat me on the back as a young fella because he mm. won a championship game. <laughs> but that ain't just it, man. He come through the lane. Big TJ uh, Granger. Uh, yeah, TJ uh, Granger. Flex yeah. Securities. Being lazy on defense, man. Let this man slip by towards the rim, full speed. And I'm thinking in my head, like back then, we just know Reggie is like a sniper. Right. You're not about to come dunk. Like I'm about to get. I'm about to block this. I'm about to be disrespectful. Like I'm about to do the most. Like this Reggie Williams. Like this is the opportunity you live for. You know what I'm saying? This one. Right. He, he just got caught up to OKC the following summer. I think he was on the Spurs and this tour right here. Right. He jump up. I jump up. I don't remember what happened. What I do remember is Reggie. 
standing up on the crowd. I want to say towards the bleachers and telling everybody, hey, this my shit. This my shit. <laughs> After he dunked on me, and I'm like, oh, all right. That's oh. cool. That's cool. But I told him, I said, yo, the reason why he brag about it so much when, when we get uh when we compete in the gym, because I said, y'all can count on one hand how many people done dunked on me. And right. You out of all people on that list, like the sniper, like you on the list. But, you know, like. Hell of a guy, man. Hell but he got a, a sneaky dunk too. Like you get yeah, sneaky yeah, ups. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Complete the complete package because he af sneaky athletic. Yep. Strong as ever. And can shoot the hell out the ball, man. Man. Hell yeah. out the ball. That, and that's why I say that's why I say I always shout out my home 804, man. Cause yep. we don't never get the credit. You know, you always hear 75 or the DMV. Yep. But like I said, man, we got a lot of ballers down here, man, lot, you know? A lot. And and I think I can't remember if I asked you last time, but just refresh my memory. Like, who will be one of the biggest competitors? You you from high school, definitely around here. But let's let's do eight oh four real quick. Who would you have to say would be the most the guy that gave you like the most problems or who was one of the best ballers you played against? And then who was one of the best players you played with that we know? Because uh, like, I know you could say overseas and stuff. I'm like to be honest, that. though, like a lot of people are different when the camera cut on in a bad way because it's a show. It's an act. Okay. Like what I respect is when the camera off who really are you. And I say this happened. Um, this happened. Um, and it's somebody I've been in the gym with a lot, but we just never like got that real like bump. It's like a because a lot of people in the gym would be ducking him. And I don't mm. respect that because I never ducked the man. Like, if you get my best, you get the best of me, you're going to get the best of me. But you're going to genuinely get the best of me because right. you're going to shy away from it. I was in the gym Wednesday, last Wednesday, with LG Gill. And we right. Heads up, you know. Big LG. Shout Big out to LG. Him, man. Hey, man. Like, it's been a long time since somebody gained my respect like that. Like, when I tell you, like, we went at it, like, we went at it to the point that. I let the competitive mm -hmm. nature get to me. So I was like, man, I don't like this dude. Mm -hmm. But I was like, damn, I don't like him because he's just like me. <laughs> he's not going to stop. Not right. He's not going to stop. You know, skilled, talented as ever, tall, lanky, you know, got the package. But I was like, you know what? Today we're going to get work. By the time we was done as like, uh, we was running fours, running mm -hmm. fours, we finished the workout working out together. Mm -hmm. And we still like, we working out at 110% as if we didn't just play for an hour and a half, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like we dabbing each other, motivating each other. And I was like, yo, this is a dog. He's a true dog. Like, it's been a while since, like, you know what I'm saying, somebody was able to, need to get here with me, you know what I'm saying? Right. And we was up there, you know? So I was like, yo, you got my respect, man. Like, I told him, I said, yo, I really respect you, man, because you really, you ain't back down. And a lot of people... They don't back down, but they take it somewhere else because they can't compete. Nah, right. he come his com competition and talking. Right, is, See, that's what happened here. when you lose. They go take he's, it somewhere else. Yes, right, sir, he's here. So neither one of us took it there because we still going at it. We going at it in the series. I won the series. You know, let's be clear about that. I won the series. <laughs> that's but, right. Like when I tell you, like I see why a lot of people scared of him. Right, I see why. Like truthfully, I I respect this game. I see why. But me personally, I'm not going to duck it. But I see why. Like he is the total package. See. And and again, that's why I say I ask these questions because we only assume and we don't, but we don't know. Yeah. And that's why I say LG won, like I said, true ballers that came off for Randy. He went to Maryland. Yeah. Yep. And 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 that's the thing, man. But again, we don't that don't get talked about. It's always the same guys. But like you said, you look for certain things. Dudes be duck and wreck. They did. They do. In this cloud based era. We did all that at 110 percent with not one camera, not one instigator, see what I'm not saying? one fan in the gym. Right. We just got better. That's what. That's see what it. I'm saying? We just got better. That's it. And um, as far as people I play with, uh, Frank Sessions is probably the far most raw talented player I ever played with. Right. Mm. And I'll just leave that for what it is. Like the dude is like natural, like a pure natural. But I would say the person I have the most respect for would be Frank Mason. Man, look, <laughs> how many times on this show and how many times I get calls and texts, Frank Mason, Frank Mason, every, every, I was like, y'all don't understand, man. Like, it, mm -hmm. and you give your reasons why because everybody come on here and I'd be like, look, I ask the questions, they can just all tell their reasons why. Mm -hmm. So me personally, I, you know, me and Frank, you know, we uh. 
we obviously played in the same team, mm -hmm. but him and my um, youngest brother are best friends and always been that, you know, so I was always the big brother to them growing up, you know, and, and you got asked about my little brother, like he he that worked too. Mm -hmm. oh, oh yeah, your brother. For sure. I, I, I For thought sure. when he came in the game, like Edmund, right? Mm -hmm. Edmund, yeah. Yeah, when he came in the game and he always had that same energy, he, he long like you, uh, just you know what guard, I'm saying? Just the point guard, just me, just, right. just me as a point guard, a little yep. shorter, that's yep. it. Yep. So uh, the thing about Frank though is that Frank was always a man since I met him. Okay. It just wasn't his time yet. Mm -hmm. But the same conversations me and Frank have now, I'm impressed because of his growth and where he took his mindset to, his, you know, his life to. But like we always had the same conversations. Like I remember little Frank asking me the same stuff. It was like, hey, uh, you think you could guard him? I'm like, man, I swear to God, I guard anybody in this world. And then Frank, me, me thinking he's saying that as a little brother, like I'm just trying to see where he at. And I asked him the same thing. He said, man, I swear to God, I guard anybody in this world. Nah, I lock anybody up. You know what I'm saying? So me and Frank still work out now in the summertime. I in, saw y'all having a bitch about to put a video out. Yeah, yeah. But it's like he the same person because he big on, he saying daily deposits. Like, now nah, we getting in every day. I don't care what happened last night. He's like, man, hey, look, Frank, man, I ain't gonna lie. I went to go hit the weights. He said, you know what's so crazy, man? I went home. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. I went to go get some weights in, too. I went to go work out because I just felt like I needed to work out. You know, see the same, you know, same Yeah, dog, y'all be pushing dog. each other. Yep, yep. Because I think it was a video y'all was outside, and I don't know if it was this big tire or something y'all was doing mm -hmm. and y'all were lifting which y'all was going at it like you went and frank went mm -hmm. i was like i love that you know like, mm -hmm. even to this day y'all still cool humble man. as ever so humble as ever still the same dude and it's like i'm just more impressed of i got nothing to do with his career path and how he took it that's he's his own man he did that by himself mm -hmm. but i was the big homie on the team i was you know my senior that was my team you know but to watch him like you know before me it was dot it was right uh uh, uh, Crisco. Before that, it was Coop. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yep. Oh, and man, I ain't I ain't say Coop. Big shout out to Coop. Yes, sir. Coop, big time Berg legend. But he always look out for me. Always take care of me. Still talk to him like at least every other day. At the bare minimum, twice a week. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Great dude. Shout out to Coop. Even man. when I jumped off with this man, Coop sending me clients. He just okay. always been there for me, man. And you know they they paved the way. And the crazy thing about it is, oh, I had this conversation this morning with Reggie. Frank benefited from all that, right? Because right. he was there through all those errors. Mm -hmm. You can see he it. Was there through all them errors, and uh, behind the scenes and the practices, Frank was that work. He wasn't scared of nobody. He went back and down. So it, it just translated for him because he had this. Mm -hmm. Since since here he had this, so I wasn't surprised. I'm like, man, what? Like Frank had 57. Like Frank had, yeah, what? Like. I'm not surprised, but it's just like it's time. It's time. See what I'm saying? And and that's when it was a question because I asked, you know, Willie Mangum in here one day, and I said, Willie, what was it like in G Dean? I said, Y'all came from John Marshall. What was those practices like? Randall Ward, I asked him. I said, Could you imagine what it was with Travis McKay? Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, and the same thing with you. I'm asking a question, you dot, you know, like Coop and all these guys in there, man. What was those practices like? You know, during that time, I saw the year that Coop was still there. I saw that year. And like, Chris just, Evans. Just got there. Yeah. Man, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. People call Cap when I say this. Those practices was hard. I bet they were. Our bench, which I was a part of that year, coming off the bench, six man, would have started on any high school team in Virginia. Right. Period. Any high school, team, anybody. I promise you, it's small people that people don't even know about. I throw a name out there like Mike, Mike. They're like Mike, Mike, mm -hmm. dog, okay. score, Hooper. You know what I'm saying? But throwing little names out there like that, them practices was hard. Coach, I don't know how Coach Lawson and Coach White managed it, and a lot of times they couldn't manage it mm -hmm. because we was getting after it. Like we all wanted to get better within the 94 feet. It got scrappy. I, I, oh, I know ever. it did. It got scrappy as ever. It was hard, but outside the ninety four feet, we doing everything together. Mm -hmm. We like this. On the, it's different off the court, but that was hard. But basketball for me personally, mm -hmm. after that era, been easy. Okay, it's been easy right because of that. And I'm just you know. So now I look for you know that same intensity, that same atmosphere. Now. In my workouts and and when I'm going overseas, because like man, <laughs> look man, I had a big man in high school. I used to throw a bad pass too, and somehow he wouldn't don't even he windmill it. 
You know what I'm saying? I had a guard that shot 11 for 11 in a game. Like, mm. that's the type of environment I come from. So I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to hear no excuses, man. Produce. Right. That's all we had. Produce. Or you won't get in the game. That's a lot of people that play for that team that just, it wasn't their time. Right. Because that man got three, three, three or four dunks in one quarter of this game. <laughs> And you nice as ever, but we can't take the, the shine from right. Him. This guard just went eleven for eleven from three. Mm, mm, mm. It ain't your time. It ain't your time, bro. You talented as ever, but it ain't your time. But that atmosphere, man, hey, <laughs> that was tough. That was tough. Basketball now is easy because of that. See, that's what I'm saying. It's like these guys got it so easy today. Mm -hmm. Like all these trainers and yeah, we, all of this uh, stuff, man. Just mm -hmm. it, 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 I. And they be acting like it's so hard. I'm like, y'all have no idea. So that I, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't realize how hard I went and how hard I go until I'm training now and not trying to say nothing bad about uh, nobody or anything like that. But I see the moments where people want to slow down, be fatigued, or stop. It was like, nah, man. Like, let me tell you something. This is the time now to go to the next level. You got to mm -hmm. fight through that, push through that. I don't know what it's like to tap out and ask for a break. Like the coaches be like, all right, go water break, man. Water break, water man. Break. Nah, we we nah, we See, good. That's we what good. I'm saying. We good. Like, nah, water break. Like, go, nah. We getting a break, you know. So, yeah. but see, that's why I think where your development. See, that's why I like. You know, you got all these trainers and everybody got this and got that. That's why I said people will be able to benefit from that because mm -hmm. you're gonna push them. It's not like you just gonna, gonna pacify honest, them. Man. And that's why I said if honest. you if it ain't for you, it just ain't for you. And that's why I say yours is just so much different, but it's epitome of which you are. You're not going to give nobody yes, which you didn't go through. Yes, sir. I'm going to be honest with you, though, and I'm, a lot of people are not going to like this. You had to say in the show, I'm going to say it. A lot of these trainers be stealing. Maybe <laughs> you, you be stealing. You be stealing. <laughs> like, if I take my kids to you and you're training. Right. I had a trainer hit me up this summer and threw me his prices before he could tell me what he offered me. But I'm like, hey, I don't know everything, but I'm an eight-year vet. Mm -hmm. What have you put in with a professional basketball player to offer me these services? What am I benefiting with coming to you as right. a client? He couldn't answer that to me. He gave mm -hmm. me a, a generic answer. I was like, yeah, because one thing I understand, even though I'm only a month and four days in, every client different. They are. My workout for every client is not the same. It cannot be the same because I'm cheating you. I don't have no generic workout. Did you see that, right? My first workout is an assessment, right? Mm -hmm. And after that, I see that's what you need to work on. I got notes. Like, I got a book about this big. Obviously, not full yet, but I'm knocking it off with notes on each client. Bam. This, that. A lot of them, they stealing from the clients, man. Yes. And it's like, I'm not in it for that. I'm not in it for the, you know, thank God. Please, please, thank God. I want to be very clear. Thank God that this is not my main source of income. Right. So I don't need the financial gain right now. I want to get my name out there. I want to get the chances to the, to, you know what I'm saying, to the youth and the people that want to get better, you know, stay healthy and stuff like that. But I really want what's best for you, you know? And the first client I had to reject and turn down and pretty much part ways with, I felt good doing that because with the effort and energy you don't bring, I cannot get you better. Thank you. I cannot get you better. I'm sorry, but we have to part ways. If I got these younger guys willing to walk out of the workout telling their parents, like, mm -hmm. I'm exhausted, but then go home and say, nah, we got to go back. Like, I don't want to work on this. I want to work on that. Like, I'm doing my job. And a big shot, I'm not going to say his name because I just don't want to, you know. That's fine. Also take the credit, but I had a, had a, a, a young big come to me. Mm. Raw. Raw. Looked like a deer in the headlights the first time I worked him out. And I'm not taking responsibility. Right. Because he gave me 110%. He didn't cry, didn't pout, didn't question it. I'm putting him through the same workouts I go through now today. Right. So I work out at 6 a.m. if I don't have a client. And I get it in then or 7 and then go get some weights. And, then, you know, so by the time I work out, him out at 7 o'clock. And he's 15 years old. A big. A 15, 15 years old. We were wow. almost about the same height. I got him for four sessions. But when I see you, the first session was like a, uh, the fifth session, bah, mm. I'm in there sweating, yelling like, yeah, that's how we, yeah. Da, da. Yo, that yes. man made varsity the other day. Wow, congrats, man. He made varsity. When I read the text, I'm like, I'm hyped, but it's like I knew it because what he showed me, like the growth I seen in full workouts. Mm -hmm. So that's a four, maybe a little bit over four hours span. The growth I seen, you got it. 
You built for it. I'm not wasting my time. I know I'm, I know I could get the, you know what I'm saying, maximize on your potential. Right. I could I could get you there. To, we could get there together because it's not me. It's really you putting in the work. I'm showing you the same thing I did, you know? Right. And just tweaking it based on what I see you, you, need, you need to work on. But a lot of these guys, I stand on that. A lot of these guys be stealing from these clients. Same old stealing. training. Same old. How you going to get everybody the same Generic. type of training? And you see that. Yep. And, and, and me and Tyree was talking about that. And you know, and then we we gonna and me and some other guys gonna be matter of fact next two this coming Tuesday, mm -hmm. we're gonna be doing a, a a segment three guys we're gonna be coming up here we're gonna be talking about that very thing you're talking mm -hmm. about because it's needed to be said it is because a lot of these people want to go with the name they'll sell you the fact like yeah I got so and so you know he is so and so college yeah yeah I I did that. But what you they did was he was already them. developed. Hey, the journey. Right. Try to get him in right. the air. Right, right. You're going to come play they, for your team and you're going to. They threw the camera. Right, put the, the camera on. good, but he was already who he was. Right. See, so you, 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 we, we, we ain't got to say no names. Yeah. You already know. Yeah. We yeah. already know. Yeah. We ain't got to do that. And I, I'm not in it for that. Like, I might take a picture after to get my, because I'm not into the social media thing like that. Right. You, now you're my not. agent it recommended me. He said, yeah, you got to keep getting content out there. And I'm like, you're right. So I do take pictures after the workout, but I'm, right. not, I'm not doing it for that. The people that have, I'm grateful to the people that have done the, the photos and videos and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but that's not what I get into because I also don't want people stealing from me as well. Right. You know, because this is the specific stuff I want my clients doing. He could go duplicate it, but I don't think he could tap into the client like I can tap into the client as well. Right. So even if you get the video, you won't get it. But the thing is, it's like one of the things I'm focusing on is like, all right, let me understand, help y'all understand something, parents. I'm in my eighth season right now. I'm not going to be here. My phone will be open and available, but I'm still getting it right now. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you son your daughter the same workout same regimen or breaking it down certain avenues i'm still doing now myself i did mine at 6 a.m this morning 10 10 a.m this morning or i did it before we did this workout or i gotta do it after we did this workout mm -hmm. i'm giving them the same thing right mm -hmm. that's 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 what i'm offering and i'm still active i don't need to do it these people are out here like so my ceiling is here as i'm telling you, i'm playing actively eight years that's right Hey, yo, that dude that's stealing that money from that family didn't even make a high school basketball team or was subpar on, on high school. Hum, so, hum. Much, as I'm sending my son there, am I saying, like, I want him to be an average high school basketball team for an average high school basketball? No, but average high school basketball player for average high school basketball team. That's who his trainer was. That's who it was. How you going to be something different? You ain't posting them, though. You ain't, you ain't posting them. You ain't got no pictures of them, but you gonna sit up here talking about these other ones that you did, but you ain't posting them. Exactly. See what I'm saying? Exactly. See, they, they don't exactly. want me to go there. I ain't gonna front, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna waste my time with right. that stuff because, nope. like I explained to my clients, my reputation on the line. So this motivated me as well. So my That's clients right. motivate me too because now when I step out on the court, if I'm stinking it up, man, I'm gonna lose clients because man, right. I don't wanna, I don't wanna yeah, work out with him. Yeah, used to work. He trained yeah. with Duvin. They like, quick to say that. Nope. So now, even when they step on the court, I gotta get the best out of them because when they leave out of here, that's Duvin client. Yep. You work out with Duvin. Duvin, yep. yes sir, he do. Yep. yep, that's my client right yep. there. Yep. Let me see yep. that stat sheet. Yes sir. Like, yep. That's the result. That's, that's the result for right them. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because yep. people be quick to do that stuff. I be like. Y'all need to stop, man. And like I said, because I, 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 because Please you, stop. you my guy. Yes, sir. Because I, I know, and I know me. If it was somebody else that was sitting up here, would talk about, I'd have been called a name out. <laughs> yeah. I would have did that because yeah. you my guy. But you know, you know what I'm saying. I'm not gonna do that because them saying that ain't my style. I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm, the reason why I'm not gonna say the name. Not but, but, but we gonna scared, do that, but not being scared like that because of personal situations. Like they reached out to me trying to give me to work out, and I responded like. I don't do the cameras. Right. See, and see, they unfollow me see, just because I don't do the cameras. Like, whoo. Let, let's let's do the math. I'm telling you, working out in 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 my hunger prime, working out three times a day. Now I'm like at two. Now to be honest, because managing families, I'm at working out twice a day. In my hunger prime, working out three times a day. Do you understand that sometimes I lose track of time? Mm -hmm. How many hours a day am I working out if I'm working out three times a day? Right. And you want to get credit for this little 45 minutes and try to make it seem like you the reason why I got all the fruits of my labor in my life? Yep. No, sir. No cameras in my workouts. We're not doing that. Thank but you. But they so big with cameras, you're not bringing the camera in here. Because you know what? My work. I tell my clients all the time, be happy with mistakes because it's the only place I'm messing up at. That's right. In my workout. It's the only because I'm giving it 110%. So sometimes the ball is going to bounce off my foot. I'm going to miss an air ball a shot. Cause I'm, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm giving 110%. I'm going to lose my mind in this workout. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But on the court, I'm going to grab, spit all together and have this put together and pull the positives out of there. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-mm. Man, 
Them, them people stealing. Them people, y'all stealing. Y'all stealing. See, this is now y'all see why this is my guy. This is why we tell tell y'all, man. Just it just it's. I, I I'm just glad we said the shame passions. We see it. We don't even have to rehearse to talk this stuff. It is what it is. I'm, real I'm so recognized. Happy, real. I'm so happy we're on the same page because a lot of people are like, oh, he's respected. He's respected. No, he respected. ain't. He ain't put no. No, work. he ain't. He ain't put nothing. He ain't put no work. No, no. Because I had I, I now because I had and I don't care if they see this. I had an episode this weekend and I had to call some people out mm -hmm. for that very thing that we talking about. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, and I know when my boy Nod see this and 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 Kichuan them, they gonna know what we talking about. But yeah. it is what it is because yeah. Yeah. no, we ain't scared. It's just it, what it is. It's just like. Come on, bro. Mm -hmm. Stop it, man. But mm -hmm. if that's what you want to do, fine. I ain't going to knock mm -hmm. your hustle, but that ain't how we do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's why I said, that's why I go hard, and, and that's why I wanted you to come on here, because I want you to get that. And that's yes, why sir. I posted on my gram the other day, it. this brother here going to give you 100% passion and commitment. I it ain't about the camera it. with him. I saw you working out that kid. I was like. This is who he is. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to be a part of that, that's cool. You can go ahead and roll with whoever else. Mm -hmm. That's your thing. Fine. You get what you get out of it. You get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. So it is sure. what it is, man. But, bro, I want to thank you, man, for coming on, I thank man. Thank you, man. I thank you, man. And, yeah, you Big always time. love, man. Yes, sir. You Thanks. always one of my top guys, man. Mm -hmm. And I just appreciate you respecting me and coming on because you know the love is both ways, man. I'm big on energy, man. Like I always, my mom always taught me how to read the room and just absorb everything, pay attention to everything, man. You always been a genuine dude to actually care. That's why when you call, like it ain't no hesitance. Like now nah, I'm gonna pick up the phone. Yeah, you always pick up about, the you know, phone. Always pick up the phone because you a genuinely good dude, man. I respect men like you, man. I appreciate you for even giving me this platform where it's just like educating the youth, educating people about what's going on, but also an opportunity for my brand to grow as well. You know. What I'm Yes, sir. I'm big on stuff like that because it represents me at all time. And it's a reason why I don't have anybody else running the business with me because oh, yeah. I have to stay here. Right. I know I can give it. I'm not 100% sure who else can give it yet. And I want to make a good choice when I add people on to, you know, what I got going on. But I'm going to take my time, man. It's no yeah. rushing this. It's no rushing this. No, it's no rush, man. It's a marathon. That's why I say the thing that I'm doing, man, you know. Like I said, it's, it's a grind with this thing, man. Yes, we sir. came, and you was one and of the few people it. that yes, respected sir. you and Luke Mon and some other people that came on when I was on Zoom, man. I want you to be mindful because I'm not speaking by myself, but Luke Mon is like here, here, like in a quality type of man he is. Like, Luke Mon is so good of a person that I was about to go to Union because of him. He was at Union at the time. Yeah, he told me. And I was, I seriously was about to go D2. I did not want to go D2 because I thought it was going to mess up my opportunities to go pro. I don't know everything, but that's what I believed in. Mm -hmm. But I said, man, but Luke Mon, man, he the total package, man. Like, he understands life. He understands basketball. Yes. I want to play for him. Like, I just wish that he was at another school at the time being right. nothing bad about Union. But I was just in fear of going D2. I would get lost in the system type thing. So I was like, man, I want to play for him. But I was, like, seriously about to commit to Union only because of Luke Mon. Only because of him. Like, that's how good of a mm. dude he is, man. And peace to Luke Mon. Big ups to him, man. Yes. And see, he's one of the few trainers that, that you know, we oh, will yeah. talk about that he, oh, yeah. he does his thing, man. I tell you now, um, I'm going to be honest. My, um, my size up package I got now, mm -hmm. out of the triple threat when I put the ball on the floor, I'm not going to say the pattern routine. I got that from Luke Mon. See what I'm saying? Because my first time working out with him, that's all we did, I want to say, for the first 30 minutes. The same combo, same drill, and stationary. Now we go on full court. And I'm like, yo, that jump. Oh, it feel good. See what I'm saying? Yeah, like he, he got the work. He got the work. Shout out to Luke Mar, man. One of the guys he was on here, man, and one of the true pioneers in this city, yes, man. Sir. And, yes, and, sir. And, and and like I said, Baduvi, man, thank you so much, man, thank for you. coming on here and taking the time thank today, you. man. And you know, anybody you want to shout out for we, we sign out, man, because I'm gonna know I'm gonna do one real quick. You know, but anybody you want to shout out? Yeah, I'm going to keep it simple. Shout out to Maxwell family. Shout out my wife, Raven. Shout out my daughter, Mackenzie. Shout out my daughter, Brooklyn, man. Keep it simple, man. Yeah, man. And, and shout out to them as well. And I had to do this today. I had to shout out, you know, the Baycott family. They hooked me up with some gear, you know, King's Court, you know, gear and everything like that. Thank you, dude. We appreciate that. Yes, sir. I like you the know, gear, too. It's still at uh, AZ, you know what I'm saying, King's Court. They told me to do that. So I told him I'd shout him out, man. These are the most comfortable shorts I got, man, look ever. Good too. Look yeah, good. man. So and, thank you, man. And anybody else, man, go ahead, dude. Not to cut you off, but uh, Baycott, uh, Big Baycott at uh, North Carolina. Yeah. He that work. Don't get no, no question. I thought he was done this year. I thought he was done. 
because he's a qua- he's like a double double factor. Like and and big, it's you big for you saying him. that. He's a double double factor. And I was in the gym with him. He back he used to come to um Rocket, and he was always like that. But now he's a grown man. I didn't think he would return. I'm happy for the return. He gonna get what he gonna get out the process. But oh my god, that little brother, King. That little brother. Yeah, King. This, this, we got on King short. King, this, 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 he, this is his shorts. I did not know that was his little brother. Yeah. I seen a little video clip. I called Coop from um, Petersburg. I called Coop. I said, man, hey, look, I'm going to send you this video quick. Who this little dude? <laughs> I was like, yo, he that work. He said, man, you know what that is? I said, nah. And I ended up, uh, shout out to Rashad Jordan. Um, he coached at his middle school. The middle school he had, okay. he the head coach. And, you know, we good friends and stuff like that. So I was out there working out, um, doing development with his with his uh, kids, you know, the, the girls and the boys. He wasn't there this day. I said, man, I just want to see how he work out. Because I could tell he's the same person in the workouts. Yep. Like a true killer, a true dog. And he's very skilled, very he talented. He is. I just pray young kids like that stay locked in because That's the thing. he got it. Just stay locked in. It's going to come. Be patient. Take your time. And you got a brother, big brother, showing you the ropes. Showing you the ropes. Take your time. Take your time. Shout out to King, man. Shout out to Big Mondo. Shout out to Joya, AZ, Lil Mondo, everybody involved, man. Because y'all heard it right here from Doovy, man. If y'all getting the endorsement for Doovy, and I know you ain't going to talk about any and everybody. So if you get it from Doovy, it's the real deal. Oh, that's a blessing. The whole family just work. Right, yeah. <laughs> a house full of work. A house full of work, right. You know what I'm saying? A house full of work. <laughs> so, no, man, I was saying, I know love is probably like buys your way, man. Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. man, for everybody here, man, y'all make sure y'all like, subscribe, and thank y'all. You know, this is another classic yes, that sir. I got, man. Yes, sir. Thank y'all for coming out. Like I said, Duve, appreciate you. Ray, thank you for appreciate being you, here today, man. man. Thank you so much appreciate for putting you, in man. today. And we're going to be out. But make sure y'all like, subscribe, and comment on this thing, man. Yes, and we sir. out. Yes, sir.